Thank you everyone for attending my talk on HRJS integration with the R programming language. Um, this all this is all bundled into a package charts for R, which I will introduce in this code. Now again, this first slide is a bit of a repetition of the title slide, admittedly. The core idea is that we make a package that allows our users to generate those interactive visualizations with each of JS solely from our code without having to interact with each of JS and JavaScript directly. The link to the repository and the documentation is on the slide. Because I expect the audience of this conference not to be too familiar with the R programming language, I have put a few slides to introduce it. R is a statistical programming language. It was first released nearly 30 years ago, and it is itself an implementation of a mobile language. However, R has come a very long way since. Um, we can now create web applications, interactive documents, connected database, and plenty, plenty more with R. Uh, it has, in my eyes, at least become a general purpose programming language. So a quick introduction on the subject. Um, the point of each of for R is we need to try and ease one of the main pain points of the world of data science, one that has become rather talked about a lot in recent years is that of communication, where um, data scientists and statisticians have complex data, complex models to communicate and having access to a nice library to create dynamic interactive visualizations surely helps at least some way in communicating complexity. Um, but the issue is that all of that lives in the R world, at least in this case. And having to create those charts with each of JS or another interactive library that uses JavaScript um, presents quite a few hurdles for data scientists and statisticians who use this programming language. Because in essence, what we have is two different programming languages that are used by in general two different kinds of programmers if you like so on the one end you have javascript associated with the web ux ui and you know, these things and on the other end you have R with statistics and academia um, and there's very little overlap in between the two so i think and i hope it will change in the future um, so we charts for our, the original package started in March 2017. I uh, had a package that was called also eCharts and wrapped eCharts V2. This is now archived in favor of eCharts for R. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we, the work on which started in March 2018, it's quite a long time ago now. Originally, it was for each arts version 4, when now on version 5, of course. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of room, quite a bit of work that's gone into making this work. So, how can you get each arts for R? You can get it from uh, the stable version from CRAN. CRAN is a comprehensive R archive network, which is just a fancy word for what is essentially. What pip is to Python or npm is to node, cran is to R, and so central repository to download and install packages. There is always the dev version on GitHub if you need it. So, how the code looks like is a bit like what we have here on the chart. So, we import a library <clears throat> and then we create a chart. Um, we use the R type. I have a few slides on this later on to explain a bit more about what it is and how it works. We initialize a chart with this function called E underscore charts. Now, somewhat interestingly, every single chart of the package starts with this function. 
everything the visualization is initialized with this. Once it is initialized, we can pass a variety of, of functions to it, over, over 100 functions and options, etc., that can be um, piped along, uh, essentially. Uh, what I want to show really on this slide is how very little code is required from the developer in order to create at least a very basic chart. And the idea is that we infer as much as we possibly can from the data that's fed into each of in order to build this often large JSON of options that each of us requires to actually plot the output. So the pipe in R4.1.0, which is I think the latest version as of today, um, this version comes with a native pipe. Uh, before then, it wasn't native, but it was a very prominent package that would provide one. Um, and essentially worked very much like a Unix pipe, whereas in Unix, you pipe the output of a program into another. In R with a pipe, you pipe the output of a function to another. And it makes essentially code a lot more readable, as you can see on the short example on the right. Not only that, but I do believe it also helps with um, interactive use and interactive sort of programming, if you like. Um, data visualizations, at least in me, is often an iterative process. One adds and removes things from the graph until they obtain something they're happy with. The pipe makes this extremely easy. So we took on the slide here the same graph we had before. And what we're going to do is now, for instance, once we've plotted this scatter plot of vehicles on the x-axis, we have the speed at which they were going. And on the y-axis, we have the distance it took for them to come to come to a complete still standstill. Now we've plotted these points, and if we want to fit the line, we can just write that and we add a line. I have more on uh, more on this more on this very function before we move here on a later slide. Then, if we want to add a title for this chart, we can just pipe title. The order of the elements that are passed to the pipe doesn't matter at all. Um, and essentially, this is how one uses the chart for R. The initializing with E underscore charts and then piping options and functions along. Now, um, interestingly, the R programming language supports the data frame, this table rectangular data structure out of the box. Um, it has a lot of other data structures, of course, like lists and whatever, but since uh, the data frame is supported out of the box, it has become the primary data structure that our programmers will use. And generally, for at least data visualization tools, it is ex expected that the data that's being used is in the, in the form of a data frame. There are very few foreign cases where you would accept something shaped differently, e.g., from GeoJSON, that doesn't really fit in a, in a table. 99% of cases, what we want is actually a table, and therefore, the chart form must support it. <clears throat> Another interesting thing that I need to bring up because it has some implications for the package that we're discussing is to say that this tidy principle. Um, I would argue that most of the R programmers at least try to adhere to it is this idea of having. Um, a, a clean data structure, not clean data, but that's also welcome, of course. There's the idea of a clean structure for a data frame. And though there's a lot more to it, in essence, each row is an observation, each variable in its own column. It comes from the R4 data science book. You can read about, you can read more about it online. Um, and so here on the left, we have an example. Is that what what we have in here essentially um, two data frames that contain the same data, but just shaped differently. 
the one on the left is clearly on the right, and the one on the right is nice and tidy. And the main problem on the left is the type column, which is through V being a single column in essence. Um, <clears throat> this is somewhat interesting because I think R internally represents data frames polymerized rather than row wise, so having a single type because the column helps. Um, also, that has implications on how we use the package and the functionalities we need to um, bring in order to allow users to, to, to plot certain data frames. Um, so for example, we took this table that we originally had again. Now what we do is essentially plot the years on the x-axis and the cases, there is uh, tuberculosis, I believe, on the y-axis. But what we do before we use this function group by, which comes from another very prominent package in R, to group our data beforehand. And so we pass what is essentially a data frame that has this sort of metadata, if you like, meta information that is just grouped by country. And each of us will treat that internally and use these groups to create separate um, series, if you like. Um, this is extremely convenient, particularly for things later on when the number of groups can dynamically change, but the code remains exactly the same. And now another interesting feature that has to do with this is, again, we take this exact same chart we had before, that we change a single argument. When we initialize the chart, we set timeline to true. And then, instead of creating a series for each and every group, we use the groups as steps on the timeline, which is an amazing kind of chart that um, each chart's JS allows to easily create if used properly to make the great visualizations. However, if you've used each chart JS in the past, you know that the structure of the underlying JSON changes dramatically. So it was it was quite interest an interesting feature to bring. Um, and to not create a separate set of functions, a separate API, if you like, for everything timeline, you could keep the exact same API and just change the single argument. Now, a quick word on internals for the curious or and the nerds. Um, essentially, uh, this is more of a credit for credit due kind of slide. Each of four R is presented with the HTML widgets R package. Um, which is an absolutely mind-blowing package, which is essentially the glue between JavaScript and R here. Each of for us simply makes use of it. Um, the brilliance of it is not so much that it just, in a sense, about communicating between R, linking R and JavaScript, is that it does so <clears throat> in a very nice way, such that we're using the package able to build other packages such as HR4R that then provide a single API for um, multiple environments. So then the visualizations that we create using the code snippets that you, I have shown on the previous slide can be used in different environments, for example, in creating web applications, in creating HTML documents, or just typing them in the R console. Whatever you use them, it doesn't change one bit the code that you write, and it will always work. And that's very much thanks to HTML widgets. <coughs> um, so essentially, what we are trying to do, and I should perhaps have put this panel the other way around, but essentially, if you know HRCS, you come from the right hand side there where you have the JSC options containing the data, etc. You might create that dynamically, somewhat differently. But essentially, this is what we're aiming for. Um, <clears throat> and what we do on the, on the left with the R chart, we recreate the data structure that very, very closely resembles that. It's essentially the equivalent. We create, uh, uh, we don't have JSON, of course. We are, but we have lists, and we can create a list that resembles 
uh, the JSON that we ultimately want to obtain. Once we have the data structure, we essentially serialize it to the end JSON that we want. And depending on the environment, that will be treated differently. So you can static document that you're trying to generate. This is essentially embedded in a script tag that can then be picked up <coughs> by JavaScript to create a visualization. Um, and if it's in a web application, generally now they'll make it shiny. This is sent via the web socket. Um, <coughs> I don't go back for this. Um, so I have a few examples. The, the idea is just to demo a bit what's possible to get people a feel for what the API looks like, uh, and to hopefully again emphasize, I, I hope, how little code is actually needed in order to produce visualizations. Um, so each each RTS has a plethora of options that allow you to. Indian create pretty much any chart you desire, which is a good thing overall, but can be cumbersome and difficult when you want to port the same library to another um, programming language such as, such as R. Uh, all of the options are available. Uh, everything I think, at least everything you can do pretty much with eCharge.js, you can do with eCharge for R, at the exception surely of the latest shape morphing that came in version of mine that's not available just yet. So for instance, if you know a bit of HRGS, again, you may also be able to translate the code that we proposed. But essentially it's bar chart, a scatter plot, we change the coordinate system, and we can manipulate the axis to change how it looks. Um, here is a simple pie, uh, pie chart, sorry, use green underscore pie. The WebGL stuff is also all supported. Here we use a data set from another R package, uh, Monterey Bay. We have a few lines to just modify that into again, a nice data frame that we like, which is three columns, X, Y, and Z. And then we just pipe that along in the charts to create the plot. This is an example that uh, I always thought was somewhat interesting. Um, it's, it was at least at some, for some time on the official website of each and I'm not sure it still is. But then again, the idea is to, to show how little code is needed. Most of the code that we have there on the left and it's actually just to create that initial data frame and get the images. But once that's done, it's very easy to actually create a chart. All the geo, map stuff, everything, is also supported, uh, <coughs> sorry, with uh, custom GeoJSON if you want to bring in your own maps. All of that good stuff um, is also available. All the 3D stuff is also um, supported. This is a Geo 3D, I think there's a map 3D as well. Getting lost myself with all the options and all the functions that we have. We we'll also try and build extensions and something that I tried to hint at one of the first slides where we fit a line. Um, <clears throat> our users, as I said, live tend to live on the world of uh, stats and the likes. And so the types of visualization, the might output and functionalities that they expect may differ somewhat from what you have in a sort of traditional JavaScript library. E.g. here, uh, we have a convenience function for a correlation matrix. The previous one that we had was to easily fit the line on a scatter plot. This is something that if you go to pretty much any R package that does visualization, you will have. Um, oh yeah, all the fancy globe stuff is also available uh, in each last for Now, in terms of extras and doing airports, Essentially, there are two companion packages to each of for R. They're going to uh, keep the core package light because they include essentially um, extensions and tools that are not needed for the vast majority of charts. And because the aforementioned CRAN uh, repository uh, does not allow a building large bundles, I think the limit is at 15 megabytes or no less. Nice five megabytes or something like that. 
pretty much just code. So anytime you have assets or data sets, it becomes too large, hence they're in another package. But those would allow you to do other neat stuff. So you have uh, some items to easily do this sort of scatter plot that we have here. Uh, it also it has tons of stuff to help you with uh, all the eTrust GL library, which is not part of a, a, a Apache. Uh, but brings in plenty of good 3D graphs um, to each of essentially. <clears throat> so demo real quick. Essentially, this is uh, the documentation website of each of And I'll walk you through uh, for a good reason, essentially. For instance, if I go to chart types, um, essentially, it's loads of code snippets and their example. And the reason I want to show you this is because it relates to what I had mentioned before uh, with regard to having a single API to create those visualizations in a multitude of environments. And essentially, chart types here, this is the file that generates this bit of the website. And if we look at it, the extension is RMD. This is a fancy markdown. <clears throat> and if you've used markdown, you may recognize the prompt matter. And then you have code fences and the code that we have. The code that we have in here is very much exactly as I have shown it on the slides previously. So in this context, the way it gets processed generates a chart like here. And as you can see, we have tons and tons of stuff uh, as possible. What we then have is, <coughs> sorry again, this other environment that I mentioned where you can create those visualizations for web applications. That is where you have a true front end and server, if you like. Uh, so this is just a demo site uh, for each of for our package. Uh, for example, if I take you to the graph, we have a, a, a network graph produced with uh, each of bar thanks to each of yes. And then we can provide users or developers rather the ability to interact with the visualization. In this context, for instance, if I take focus and focus on the node, focus and focus, but the, the key here is really that those to create those buttons again is only our code. And uh, the developer does not have to understand JavaScript, event listeners, etc. So I think this is it for me. Thank you very much. I'll be in the chat room somewhere if you have questions. Thank you.